Obviously, spoilers in this entire video for the anime and manga Parasite. A sci-fi show about alien parasites invading and taking over humanity pretending to be one of them, does that sound interesting to you? If it does, then Parasite the Maxim, or just Parasite, is the show slash manga for you. The manga was written and illustrated by Hitoshi Iwaki in the 90s and finally got an anime series in 2014, animated by the wonderful people at Madhouse Studios. Without getting ahead of myself, I see it as a coming of age story of a boy going through these changes and not knowing how to tell people, or even if he should. Yeah, that didn't sound anything like an alien invasion the way I put it. But that's just because I'm big braining and digging deep into the story as we speak. The day was like every other normal day. Oh, oh no, it just starts immediately off with the parasites falling out of the sky and someone getting a hit bit enough from someone we thought was a human at first. Is it okay to consider parasite a horror genre? It definitely has elements of horror in it. The main character, Shinichi Izumi, was caught off guard by one of these parasites when it tried to make its way to his brain from his arm. Since Shinichi had earbuds in though, it couldn't easily go through his ear like the rest of the parasites have done. But Shinichi felt it and basically stopped it with his headphone wires. So the parasite had to take over his arm and thus began the story of human and parasites learning how to live together. I didn't know this while watching the first half for the first time, but Madhouse updated the character designs and the settings so it will look more modern compared to his 90s counterpart. Honestly, after going back and reading the manga, it still hits the same amount emotionally and you still feel like you're growing with these characters who are trying to find a purpose for their existence themselves. Most of the parasites that have taken over society have no thought, they just feed off their hunger for humans. Well, I say most, but all really besides one, Reiko Tamara. Reiko, unlike most parasites, questioned her existence and experimented with what all a parasite could do in a human body, how many parasites can fit in one body, and could a parasite have a child? And to answer one of the questions, yes. Yes, a parasite can conceive and the child would indeed be human with no parasite within it. The mindset of Reiko Tamara clashed with the mindset of early Shinichi who wanted nothing to do with parasites and just saw them as a nuisance to the human society. But going through all of these hurdles, huge spoilers by the way, Please go away if you don't want spoilers. He sees how Reiko grew to take care and even love her child to the point where she died protecting it. This is when we see Shinichi internally remember what it means to be human and wonder if there's a way that humans and parasites could get along. But there was one person stopping him. Goto slash Miki and every other parasite that's in his body. Goto tried to do things the civil way at first and seeing where that got all the other parasites and Reiko Tamara, he was through and ready to destroy humanity, especially Shinichi. Since Goto isn't the main character, obviously he didn't succeed, but that wasn't the important part of the conflict. The important part was Shinichi and Migi, which is the parasite's name that's in his right hand. How have I not said that yet? Oh my god. Anyways, after injuring Goto to the point where it takes a long time for him to recover, they have a conversation. Shinichi says no matter how much Goto has done, he can't bring himself to kill him. Goto didn't ask for this life, he was flung into it and just did what he could in order to survive. Ultimately, he had to end Goto's life, but we don't really like to talk about that. Afterwards, for some reason, parasites began to conform to society and now they live peacefully, probably thinking that they're all are human at this point because there's generally no difference between them in the end. Parasite the Maxim is such an amazing show. I could talk about it and watch it and read it for hours, 
Relating to Shinichi is a must, I feel, in order to enjoy this show. Watching it just for the action or gore is definitely not the move. You'll be disappointed by how little there are in some situations, if that's all you really care about. Personally, I'm just happy Shinichi ends up having a great life in the end, honestly. Um, thank you guys for watching, and I really hope you enjoyed this video. Goodbye. Whoa, whoa wait, wait, wait a second. There's spin-off sequel mangas called Neo Parasite MNF respectively, with stories done by different artists in honor of Parasite? Oh, so that's where the fairy tale and Parasite crossover comes from. It totally makes sense now. It totally makes sense. Oh, I definitely know what I'm reading after this. <laughs>